Alright guys, learning target one is justify whether a relationship is a function and state the domain and range from either a description, a table, <clears throat> or a graph. So we're going to first define function. A function assigns each element in a domain, so x's, to exactly one element in the range. Okay, and that's exactly what domain and range are. Domain is all the x values or the inputs, and range is all the y values or the outputs. So if you think about it, um, the domain, what makes a function a function is that the domain, each x value, only has one y value. So we'll talk about what's called a vertical line test, something like this, where each y value has a, um, ha can have multiple x values is okay, but each x value cannot have multiple y values and the way you check that is we put a vertical line through our graph and we say okay at any point does this vertical line touch more than one point and it doesn't on a table that's going to be where we have x's and y's and x1 x2 x3 um, all of those can only go to one y okay if they went to multiple y's or if mul if x and y, or x1 and x3 went to 1y, that would not be a function anymore. It would look like something where we had multiple dots above each other. <coughs> okay, so that's a function, domain, and range. So the way we talk about functions, we're asked to say, does this represent a function, and then give the domain and range of each. Okay, so first thing is to check, does each x go to only one y. Well, one only goes to two, two only goes to four, three only goes to six. So then the way we do this is we write that the domain in this table, now since we're only given three, put, uh, three inputs in this table, that's the only thing in our domain. And we write domains in sets, which have these little brackets here. So the domain is one comma two comma three. That are, those are our three inputs. Our range is 2, 4, 6. Okay? Over here, we have inputs of 1 to 1, one to, or 0 to 2, and then look at here, 1 also goes to 5. So if we were to graph this, the number 1 would go to 1, and would go to 5, so it would not pass that vertical line test. So this is not a function. And then finally, table 3, all of our inputs go to 0, which means we just have a horizontal line at 0. Okay, 1 is 0, 2 is 0, 3 is 0, 4 is 0, 5 is 0, 6 is 0. So our domain here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <clears throat> now you might be wondering why I didn't say just 1 through 6. Well, we don't have 1 through 6. 1 through 6 includes 1 .1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, and the infinite numbers in between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6. So that's a much larger set than this set of just 6 numbers. And then our range is going to be a set of just one number, the number 0. So our domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and our range is 0. Moving on, we're asked to see if each of these is a function and state the domain and range. So these, in graphs, it's much easier because you can use what's called the vertical line test. Vertical line test, if a graph does not represent a function, if you can draw a line, um, a vertical line through it and have that line touch more than one um, y at the same time. So this one passes function, this one not a function, so here we'll write function, not a function. If we keep going this one's going to be a function because at no point do we have two vertical points. So function not a function. 
oops, not a function. And then finally, this one is a function, and I'll tell you why. Because these open circles, even though when we're right here, it kind of looks like we're touching two things, the open circle represents not a point. Okay, so it's deliberately, it's not being vague and just having a closed circle to here, and, and then the, the closed circle starts up here and saying, oh, is that is that something? They put the open circle there to say, no, it's not there, it's up there. <clears throat> so this one would be a function. All right, so then for those functions, let's state the domain. Um, I actually am realizing that we need to add some numbers to these to state the domain. So let's say that this one goes from 0 to 10 and 0 to 10, making this like 8, okay? Now, since we don't have any, or any arrows on our graph here, we're going to assume that this graph stops at t x equals 10 and stops at y equals 8, okay? So now... If you think about it, we have, this is what's called a continuous line. So now our domain can stretch from 0 to 10. And the way we write that is we say 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 10. Because it can go from 0 to 10. And the range goes from 0, is our lowest point, is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 8 is our highest point. Okay, and this one's not a function, so we won't do it. Um, let's look at this one. Let's say this goes from, this is negative 5 to positive 5. And let's say this goes from 2 to negative 2. Okay, so our domain would be from negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5 to our range is negative 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to positive 2. And you can put those numbers in brackets to say that they are sets because that is a set of numbers. Alright, and then here let's say we go from this is negative 4 to 1, and let's say this is negative 6 to 6. Now, here's something different. Our x's cover every bit of that line, so our x's are continuous. So our domain is that x is less than or equal to negative, oops, never mind, sorry negative 6 is less than or equal to x. But then I'm noticing that it doesn't actually meet at 6. If this is 6, our domain doesn't cover 6. So it's just less than 6. Okay? And then our range, it only goes, like let's say this is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1. So it only covers negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and 1. It's a concrete set of numbers. It's not continuous throughout there. All right, before class then, I want you to read through this question, and you're going to come up with some real-world problems that are functions and that aren't, and you're going to answer my example there before class. <laughs>